Today, we're gonna to show you how to use the brand new generative workspace in Photoshop 2025's beta. It allows you to create a ton of images very quickly. So we're starting off in Photoshop beta. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and click on your Creative Cloud installer, go right here to beta apps, and then make sure your Photoshop beta is up to date and open it up. Okay. Now let's go ahead and close this out. We're in the beta. We're gonna go to edit and then down here to our brand new generative workspace. So here in the generative workspace, basically it tells you how to use it here. And a great place to do it is to start off with the inspiration. So let's go ahead and click there. Now, as you scroll through these different images, if there's something that you like, a retro style poster with a traveler trailer in the Arizona desert, you can hit use settings right here and it automatically puts all that information into your own prompt. And then you have a few different things you can put in there, like kitschy, faded image, graphic, all these different styles. And you can even have these different effects that you can put on. You can see the art effect is already on there. So if you wanted to make a similar image, all you have to do is click here on generate, and you're gonna see it's gonna go ahead and generate. Now this works very quickly, much quicker than the previous version because we have this brand new fast mode. Okay, and here you can see it's generated all these different variations. Now, I like this one with the cactus. So I'm gonna go ahead and say with, and then we're gonna use this brand new tool that says add variable, okay? If I hit add variable, now I have these brackets and I can type in different things that I wanna see, all right? So I'm gonna say one is gonna be cactus. There we go. And then I'm gonna put comma and then I'm gonna put camping tent. There we go. So cactus and camping tent. Now here you're gonna see it's gonna generate eight different images. So let's go ahead and click here on generate. Okay, these four are gonna have it with a cactus, and then these four are gonna have it with a camping tent. So you can have your core idea and then add things here at the end, okay? So these, as you can see, all of them are be sure to include a cactus, and then these ones, all of them include a camping tent. You can see, there we go, this looks really good. Let's see, we find the one that we like the best, and we can go ahead and favorite that. Now the cool thing here, let's go ahead and favorite that, we can go ahead and say we can add this to a new document or let's go ahead and add it to the open document that we have and go ahead and click on add and it's gonna put it right into Photoshop and look at that, it puts it there in Photoshop. Now, this is super, super cool, but there's one additional thing that I really like about this. It's able to add a composition and a style reference to these photos. Okay, so let's do the composition reference. I think this is gonna be really cool. So the composition reference, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make that invisible. We're gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna use a few different colors. So let's go ahead and grab, we'll just use this like pink color here. This is gonna be our ground, okay? Let's add a new layer. There we go, and we'll add like a blue color. Okay, and then this'll be, you know, something else there. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what it is. We'll just go ahead and add a green color here. Maybe that's gonna be a cactus. Okay, and then let's add a new color here, and then this is gonna be like a sun. Okay, we'll just add another color there, and we'll just make it a perfect, there we go, a perfect circle, and then go ahead and fill it with that color. So <laughs> you might look at this and be like, okay, this is just a random blob of shapes, but let's go ahead and save this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and save for web. We're gonna put this here on our desktop. So let's go to save. I'm just gonna pop this on our de desktop and we'll just call this comp for now and hit save. Now, we're gonna go back into our generative workspace and use this exact composition to guide our images. So let's go to edit. We're gonna go back into our generative workspace, okay? Now, I really like this prompt that we had, and these images with the cactus, I think, look really good. So let's go ahead and use this image with the cactus. Now, the cool thing here is if I go ahead and grab this cactus, I can say use all settings. So I just go ahead and click there. It's gonna add all of these settings to my prompt, and we're ready to go. But this time where it says reference, we're gonna add a reference composition. So let's go ahead and click on reference. You can see you can do a composition reference. Basically, you can choose exactly where you want the different elements. So we're gonna go to upload image right over here, and then we're gonna click on this comp. Remember, like literally we just made this, right? <laughs> it's very fancy. Let's click on open, okay? It's gonna upload here, and you're gonna go ahead and increase the strength. Bring it all the way to 75. So it's going to use this composition that we just made to actually create the final version of this. And of course, you can continue to change this, update, and make a composition that really works with whatever you have in your mind. Okay, now you can also do a style reference if you wanted to, like you can hit browse gallery and do all these different styles. Let's say we wanted to do a, 
I really like this style reference, so let's go ahead and click on there, and then we're gonna click here on Upload. So it's going to match the composition that we just made and the style that we just made right there. Okay, now we still have the same exact prompt that we have. We have our composition, we have our style. Let's go ahead and click on Generate, okay? We're gonna use this viewer to view our timeline view and see this is actually generating here with our different elements intact. So it's a fantastic way to generate a lot of results very quickly. And you can see this is exactly what we wanted to do. If you remember, you can see our composition reference. We had like a little trailer over here. We had a cactus on the left. We had a sun on the top. And then don't forget here, you can still add a variable, okay? We're gonna go ahead and say moon, okay? And then we're gonna say sun. There we go, let's click on it, generate. And then some of these, it's going to have a moon and then some of it's going to have a sun. But you can see like literally the exact place that I put all of these different elements, it now added those into my composition. So I can create a beautiful exact composition, whatever I want. I think this one looks good. Let's go ahead and put a star on that. I'm, I'm, I'm overall really impressed with these. Honestly, they look really good. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. All right, and have it update into my composition. I can say open or I can just add it to my document that I already have open, put it as a separate layer. There we go and hit add. There we go. It's adding right to my document and then take a look at this. So I'm just gonna turn this off. We can see that's literally what we just made as our composition reference and I turn this back on and our generated image, I mean, look how close that looks. The cactus, everything. It's pretty much exactly what I drew, except way, way better. So we started with this image where we had a lot of elements that we really liked, and then using our composition and our style reference, we were able to wind up with this photo. So you can see how powerful this generative workspace really is. All right, we got one more example for you. I wanna do a ton of different variations in a short period of time. So we're back in our generative workspace here. You can see all of my different prompts. Everything stays intact, which is really nice. Now, if I wanna clear all this out, all I have to do is right over here, I'm just gonna click on this X and it's simply gonna clear everything out, okay? And then we're gonna go back to our timeline view right over here, okay? And I can type in something that we want. So I'm gonna type in forest with, okay, and then I love this new variable, forest with, we'll just call it um, balloons, <laughs> why not? Space, monkeys, and we'll say trees, there we go, and lily pads, there we go. So we'll see all of these different variations. We don't need to use reference, we don't need to use an effect. In fact, we can just say here on effects, I want it to look like a photo. So let's go ahead and click on photograph, there we go, close that up, and it's gonna generate 16 different versions of my image. You're gonna see we are in fast mode, so everything is going to happen really quick. So you're gonna see first is forest with balloons, second, forest with monkeys, third, forest with trees, forest with lily pads, and here we go. So we have our forest with balloons, again, four different images of those. How cool is this? Forest with monkeys, they look like photographs, it looks really good. Forest with trees, going through these different images, and then forest with lily pads. It did all that incredibly quickly. And of course, any of these things I wanna bring into Photoshop, simply click on open, and it's gonna click open and bring that right into Photoshop, and you're ready to start working. So as you can see, this brand new generative workspace allows you to create a ton of variations and control with composition and your style references. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you wanna get even more advanced tutorials, check out Flurn Pro on flurn.com today. Thanks so much. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.